Well, how do there, Charms Design, Captain of the Steves, and today, Charms, I just want to talk about Power World. And when I say talk about Power World, I want to give you my review and thoughts and synopsis of Power World. So I've been thoroughly enjoying my time. With Power World, I find it to be quite a hard game to put down once you start getting to playing it. The base building, although it's not overly complex and can be extremely finicky at times, especially putting on a slanted roof, it's actually really good because you've got to think of how you can automate things around your base and how certain pals are going to interact with the things that you put down and not only that what commodities are going to leave at your base it's like some of them if they go to a ranch can even drop gold coins which is pretty darn freaking excellent there is quite a lot of controversy around pals at the moment and i know that i've lost quite a fair few subscribers for bringing it to my channel I also lost, lost subscribers though when I covered Harry Potter, you know, whatever that game was, Hogwarts Legacy, and also when I covered the Alex Jones game, yes, where you're taking on the elitists of the world, which I liked it for that reason. I'm not so much into Alex Jones, but I did like the ability to be able to take out Bill Gates, which was quite nice. But anyways, back to Power World. Power World is a fantastic game in my opinion, people, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and it's not one that I'm going to cancel from my channel. Even if people do protest, I need to put my foot down. I've stopped playing some games that I really enjoy because I've actually had backers of my channel hit me up in the past and say, Captain Steve, I really don't agree or condone this game. And in, in most part, I agreed with them. Some of the actual backlash I'm seeing from Power World is, is it right to be treating creatures in this way? It's a video game. It's a video game and of course in real life I wouldn't treat creatures in the way that I'm treating these pals in the real world. In fact, if I did go and get a beaver and say, right Mr. Beaver, I want you to cut down that tree for me, he's not going to listen. You know, it's, it's not real world, people, at the end of the day. And if you do want to liken it to the real world, then there's a lot of things that we do in the real world already. We breed horses for racing or for doing show jumping or to go hunting. We still use horses as workhorses even today. Over in other countries, they use animals for all sorts of labour, whether that's ploughing fields and all sorts of other stuff, or donkeys to carry things a frickin' miles, or camels even, or elephants. So, you know, it's already happening inside of the real world, and this is just a virtual representation of that sort of stuff. And yes, we breed animals to eat them in the real world. What I would say to the people that are trying to say cows is cruelty to animals, you need to grow up a little bit. You know, if you go and play GTA and you're murdering people in the street, it doesn't make you a murderer, okay? So please just jump off of that bandwagon. Any comments like that that I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remove them from the channel. I don't overly do that ever on ever games that I play, but if I see any really weird sort of comments that are making out that I'm a cruel person, you obviously don't really know me, you're new to my channel, and you obviously don't understand where I'm coming from, and I'm just playing games to escape reality. If you're putting in comments and comparing me to some sort of safari hunter or something like that, goodbye, your comment is gone. And because mainly I play games to escape from the realities that you're presenting inside of my channel. And this game is an escape from reality, and I thoroughly enjoy playing it. So I'm going to carry on playing it on my channel, I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to play it for. I mean, although that I like it, and this is a review, now I've got past the controversy, let's just get to the fun stuff and the stuff why you're probably here and tuned in. Is it a good game? Yes, it is. Are there some bugs? Is there some issues? Yes, there are. Here you go. I will play you a load of bugs that I've encountered myself, people inside the Viewerverse, and some of the reasons why I'm thinking about even putting down Power World for a bit. Okay, chum, so one reason why I'm thinking about giving up on playing on Power World is at your actual base, your Power World's AI isn't all that great. My turtle is stuck on top of this giant rock, doing nothing. All these guys are just standing there, again, just doing nothing. Look, when I pick this stuff up, I bet they start moving around after that. Look, they, they kind of just got stuck, but that happens way too often. I don't know how this guy got on top of this rock, or why he's up there. Um, but it's not even letting me pick him up right now either. No, I can't get him off the top of the rock. So the only thing you need to do is go into the actual power box. Blah, 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 blah. Take them out of um, working area, which there he is. And then swap him back into the working area. And then that unsticks them. But I, I find I'm doing that a lot. Far more than what I feel I should be doing, to be honest. And uh, it, it's kind of annoying. 
And then even when you do put them back, sometimes they just sit around and do very little. It's just a little bit too finicky. I think I might wait until there's been a few more updates because at the moment it's just, it's more hassle. Oh no, look, he's gone stuck up there now. Really freaking weird. All right, anyway, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit strange. I think I need to wait for a few more updates and then pick back up Power World again at a later date. At the same time, I still really enjoy it. It's the best game that I'm playing at the moment. You know, when it comes to things to do anyway. Something else is pretty annoying. Oh, he's actually started doing it now. Okay, I threw him at this furnace like about four times and it said assigning to get copper ore. I don't even have copper on here. So I have no idea what the actual game was saying, but there we go. Now it's actually working. That took me a lot of tries to get him to go and ignite the furnace. Pain in the neck. Jumps five minutes later and my dig tortoise is on top of the rock again. And he's now starving and he's losing all of his energy. Um, great. Yeah, if I wasn't here to spot that, then he would die. And that, that's, uh, that sucks. Ah, I picked up the wrong bloody one. And another thing is, it, it does feel like the um, controls are not made for a joy, joypad. Yeah, there we go. Let's stick him down. I'm not too sure why he's up there either. But now he's just dropping infinite stuff. Okay, well that's a bug I can live with. Brilliant. Well, carry on, mate. Keep doing what you're doing. That's pretty darn cool. But he is definitely stuck up there. Okay. I'm going to just hack this rock apart, I think, people. Maybe it's the rock that's causing the problem. Let's just hack it down. Another thing that sort of does, does my head in is crafting ammo. Crafting ammo takes a heck of a long time. And I know that a lot of people probably say, well, you need to use your um, automated crafting thingy majig. Yeah, I've got one of them, but then you've got to get electricity for it and all sorts of other shenanigans. That's also a little bit time consuming, you know? See, I've actually built the actual conveyor belt to make the ammo. But you see there, it says not enough electricity. Yeah, I haven't put an electric generator as yet. Um, I've got one at my other base, just haven't got one at this one. Yeah, another thing that kind of annoys me is your chest from one base to the other. You can't sort of access them in any way, shape or form. So you have to keep teleporting back to your other base to get the resources. And then you get over encumbered quite easily. It's, it's a bit fiddly. You know, the whole system's a bit fiddly. Well, I'm back at my other base, and as you can see, I've got, I've got electricity at this base, and I've got the conveyor belts in, which is all cool, and they've got enough power. Heck yes! But look, you've got that guy that's stuck on a freaking wall, and there's two guys stuck on the roof of my shed. Yeah, I say shed, it's my, it's my house. But yeah, this, this just seems to happen. Now that I've got two bases, I'm finding this happens a heck of a lot more. So, God knows what happens when I've got three bases. I'd imagine it gets extremely buggy. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see there, there's quite a lot of little bugs. There's also some game mechanics that I'm not keen on having to hold down buttons for a prolonged period of time. And if you want to get away from holding down that button for a long period of time, you can build electrics inside of your actual um, encampment. The only thing is, is putting down the electric components and getting all that in takes up a serious amount of room. So you kind of need one base just for doing all the electric automation and another base for getting the resources, which then means you've got to fill up your character to go from base to base, but then you get over encumbered rather easily and it kind of defeats the object. There needs to be a way of teleporting your resources from one base to another base or accessing inventories from one base to the other without having to carry them on your person because your person can't carry all that much. Is my sort of feedback if the developers ever pick up this video. But yeah, that would be one thing that would help speed it up. Also, the AI pathing of the actual PALs is pretty terrible in places as you saw in those sort of um, excerpts. Powell developers Pocket Pair have put out a roadmap on the game and that's one of the things that they've got on there on their roadmap so i'm super happy with that the only thing is it seems to be that all the updates and patches are coming over to steam on on pc but they haven't touched the console as yet and that was the same with their previous game craftopia the the updates will take a long time so i can only but hope that they bring it to xbox soon because on the xbox at the moment it's becoming frustrating rather than fun in a lot of the instances where it comes to base management and also progressing your actual missions for your base to the point that i'm at i'm at the point though that i'm at level 40. 
I'm on level 40 and I think I can start taking on some of the harder bosses and I think I could probably go for end game and complete it. Get to the stage where I've completed it, get to the stage where there's I'm waiting for DLC and updates to come into Power World and then move on to something else for a bit. So that's how I feel about Power World. If I was to score Power World right now in its current format that it is for Xbox Series X and the consoles, I would score this around about an 8.4 out of 10. Mainly because it's got some really marvellous ideas inside of the game and also I'm finding it hard to put down and I'm really thoroughly enjoying my time in Power World. The only reason why it's lost a shed load of points is because of the bugginess, the pathing, all that sort of stuff that is at launch. I mean, I say at launch, it's still early access, it's not even a fully fledged game. So perhaps I'm being a bit harsh with my review there, people. Now I also know that Power World could be at threat from Nintendo for sort of like likenesses of the different Pokemons. This is back to the controversy again now. But to be fair, I would say that the likelihood of that happening is going to be pretty infinitesimal, I think. Because you've got other games out there that have done this before, like Temtem on the PlayStation 5. This That looked pretty much like Pokemon, had the same mechanics and things like that. That game is still out there, that game is still going. And I would say Power World is far more removed than Temtem is from Pokemon and Pokemon. I mean, it's more like Ark Survival Evolved. You know? And in, it's even got elements like Enshrouded with the old gliders and the world traversal and all that sort of shenanigans. So I would say this stands very this separated from Pokemon. There's going to be people that might argue the fact that these are direct rip-offs of Pokemon, but then I'll throw the argument back, well, did Pokemon rip off, you know, Dragon Quest and other games before that, or even Barcode Battler as a conceptual idea, or maybe even Magic the Gathering when it comes to the way that the actual card game is played in Pokemon. You know, that sort of stuff. So I think inspiration is fine, as long as it doesn't go to the realms that, oh, you've completely ripped it off, you know. I don't think this completely rips off Pokemon. I think it's a little bit of satire. I think it makes a couple of little jabs at the old Pokemon, but I don't think it's anywhere, anywhere close to the same when it comes to playability, when it comes to Pokemon. So there we go. Anyway, that's my review. I would say if you can pick this game up, pick it up because it's really good fun. It's highly addictive. It really sucks you in. And hopefully if they stick to their actual roadmap, it's only going to get better. And that score that I just gave it is just how it is now. I might do another review of this once they turn it from being early access to being a full-fledged game and i am really hoping this comes out on other platforms like the playstation 5 i guess because that just widens the audience that can get in and play this because it is thoroughly good fun anyway people thank you for watching my review i'm going to get back to drinking my lovely cup of tea yes i've got my own brew of tea it's got oaky notes it's an english breakfast tea and you can even get a nice fandangly mug from my merch store check the links below people anyway until next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.